In the previous course, you learned the difference between open and closed systems and the advantages of using electronic signatures over handwritten signatures in line with 21 CFR Part 11. In this short course, you will learn about the EU GMP Annex 11 requirements. This is the GXP industry's second most important system of guidelines for electronic records and electronic signatures. For the sake of efficiency, this will not be a comprehensive discussion of all the requirements. Please read the entire EU GMP Annex 11 document yourself for a deeper understanding. Please consider that when a regulation says should, it really means must. Annex 11 is a supplementary document of the EU GMP rules, Eudralex rules governing medicinal products in the European Union. Note that EU GMP rules are split into three different parts plus about 20 annexes. Annex 11 has similar requirements to the FDA's Part 11. If you are conducting business in the EU, you should apply Annex 11 principles to all computerized systems that are used in GMP-regulated activities. Annex 11 aims to ensure the computerized system you use to manufacture medicinal products have no negative effect on process control, product quality, product efficacy or patient safety. In addition, when a computerized system replaces a manual operation, Annex 11 is designed to ensure there are no increased risks. In reality, the computerized system should be much better than the human factor, as the human factor makes more errors. Annex 11 applies to all forms of computerized systems used as part of GMP-regulated activities. It includes all manufacturing and laboratory computerized systems, including process control, documentation, data processing system, spreadsheets and databases, and statistical analysis software programs. Generally speaking, Annex 11 does not apply to medical devices. However, companies can benefit from aligning their activities with the guidance to improve future outcomes. Annex 11 rules require that IT infrastructure is qualified and that applications are validated. What's the difference between qualification and validation? Qualification is objective evidence that a piece of equipment or a computerized system is correctly installed, works as expected, and is fit for the intended use. Validation is the assessment and collection of data that establishes objective and scientific evidence that a process, procedure, equipment, material, activity or system can consistently deliver a quality product. Qualification is mainly used for equipment and instruments, while validation is mainly used for processes and computerized systems. As I mentioned before, Annex 11 is directed at products and services manufactured and sold in the EU, while Title 21 CFR Part 11 applies to any products sold or manufactured in the US, or products sold abroad by US companies. This begs the question, does EU GMP Annex 11 cover all the requirements from 21 CFR Part 11? Yes and no. You have to align all the regulatory compliance standards with your organizational interests before doing business globally to ensure you meet all the applicable guidelines. I will go through the interpretation of each EU GMP Annex 11 requirement. Note that this is not an exhaustive list. One section of Annex 11 requires that risk management be applied throughout the life cycle of a computerized system to ensure patient safety, data integrity and product quality. This assessment should be done based on a justified and documented risk assessment. Annex 11 requires a close cooperation among key personnel such as users, system administrators, quality assurance team members, and technical staff involved in the development, validation, management, and use of computer systems. All personnel should have the necessary qualifications, appropriate level of access, and defined responsibilities to carry out their assigned duties. 
Annex 11 also emphasizes close cooperation among the process owner, system owner, qualified persons and IT staff. Now let's review the meaning of system owner and process owner. The process owner is a person responsible for the business process. The individual, in this case, is typically a senior manager as a business process may impact more than one department. The system owner is a person responsible for the availability and maintenance of a computerized system and for the security of the data residing on that system, for example, a senior laboratory manager. The individual in this case would go to jail if the system validation is wrong or incomplete. If third parties are used to carry out any work, for example, supply of a product or service on a computerized system, there needs to be a formal agreement outlining their responsibilities. Even if an organization's IT department is used to support a validated computerized system, a formal agreement must be in place with a regulated laboratory. Keep in mind that auditing a service supplier based on a documented and approved risk assessment process is an important requirement. If an audit is performed, the organization should monitor its suppliers to ensure corrective actions following audits of quality management systems, products and services have been implemented effectively. A life cycle should be used to validate a system. Annex 11 does not mandate any validation approach. However, the approach selected needs to be justified and documented based on the corresponding risk assessment. An inventory list of all computerized systems, with a description included for critical systems, should be available during inspections. For each computerized system validation, there needs to be user requirement specifications that describe the required functions of the system based on risk assessment and GMP impact. During the system validation, the test methods and scenarios need to be documented. Testing should include the overall process, with consideration to the reporting of quality and performance measures, such as data and parameter limits, and with all errors detected and addressed before the system goes live. Sections 5, data, 6, accuracy checks, 8, printouts, 9, audit trails, and 12, security, cover items of data integrity. These sections identify checks for correct and secure entries, both manually entered and automatically captured, and the necessary data processing to minimize the risks of a wrong decision being made based on the wrong results. Security access for authorized employees, such as the use of a username and password, must be maintained in each validated system. Further controls are required to protect data from damage. Stored data should be checked for accessibility, readability and accuracy. This applies to both paper and electronic records. Electronic signatures must have the same impact as handwritten signatures. They should be permanently linked to the respective record and include the time and date. GMP Annex 11 does not share the 21 CFR 11's formality or stipulation to send letters to the FDA. However, many of the same requirements are implicit, as the European legislation states that all non-repudiation requirements apply immediately. An audit trail is not mandatory for all computerized systems. The implementation of an audit trail should be based on a documented risk assessment. I recommend applying audit trails to all electronic data with an impact on product quality, product efficacy and patient safety. An audit trail needs to include the date and timestamps of record entries, changes and deletions. Finally, 
The audit trail needs to be available and convertible to a generally intelligible form and reviewed on a regular basis. This is meant to ensure your systems are not merely depositories of unintelligible garbage. It is imperative that you demonstrate the systems are properly reviewed. If there are printouts of electronically stored data or of any records used to support batch release, they must show whether any data has been changed since the original entry. This ensures a qualified person who is suitably trained can determine what changes have been made. Note that only using the audit trail search function to fulfill this requirement is not fully guaranteed. This means you would expect to find the result printed out with an annotation indicating whether the result has been changed. Regarding the archiving process, section 17, data should be checked for accessibility, readability and integrity. This means electronic records acquired in one software version can be read in a new version. Therefore, the data should be assessed for accessibility, readability and integrity, especially after changes are made to the backup software or system. Backups, section 7.2, must be done regularly. Documented evaluations of the integrity and accuracy of backup data and the ability to restore data are also necessary. This last requirement is critical as it ensures backup media can still be read throughout the record retention period. All incidents, system failures and data errors should be reported and assessed during the system lifecycle. The root cause of a critical incident should be identified and form the basis of corrective and preventive actions. Incident management implies a need for a process to assess and classify errors. Critical ones require root cause analysis followed by the formulation of CAPA plans. In the case of system breakdown, there should be a backup plan available to ensure business continuity and support for critical processes. A backup plan will also help identify the time required to bring alternatives into operation based on risk assessments. This backup plan should be documented and tested in advance to confirm you have an alternative computer site. The guideline requires the completion of a periodic review to ensure the computerized systems remain in a validated state. Reviews should cover the last full validation and any changes made in the interim. All deviations and incidents, procedures and training, upgrades and security need to be documented in a report. Regarding change and configuration management, all changes to a computerized system, including system configurations, should only be made in a controlled manner. This ensures the system is maintained in a validation status. A procedure must be defined according to risk assessment principles.